Rapture by Devlin Giroux. Performance, audio production, and music by Jeff Clement. The first spring wind blew through the park. For the tiniest of moments, the haggard man on the bench forgot the smell of the city. He held out his hand, letting the air slip through his open fingers. Leathery skin and aching bones were all that remained of hands once so powerful. The moment passed, the city's perfume of urine and desperation rushing in as if annoyed at the interruption. He slumped over, head in his hands, knowing what had to be done. You all right, mister? Not from here, he said, not looking up. Pardon? Nebraska. One of those states that people wonder what the hell ever happens there. He raised his head. A young girl, smooth-skinned and clear-eyed, stared down at him, hands resting on her swollen belly. What reason could you ever have to bring that child into this world by way of this city? What? The old man shook his head. (sighs) Never mind. Pretend the conversation never happened. Are you sick? She asked, reaching for her cell phone. (sighs) Sometimes. Do you need a doctor? I can call an ambulance. Doctors? I remember shamans who could tempt the wind to dance and command the mountains to kneel. The girl started to dial her phone. They're dead now, buried by Watson, Crick, Pfizer. He laughed. (laughs) Put the phone down, my dear. I'm not sick. At least, not as you understand it. He patted the open bench beside him. And I won't hurt you. Can't. Not anymore. I really think I should get back. He's not home yet. We both know that. Please. She sat at the far end of the bench. Good enough, he said. Are you going to give up? I don't understand what you're asking, she said. On the reason you moved here. You came here, but you didn't expect to get pregnant. Are you going to keep dancing? How? What's your name? Or should I guess? Mary, she said. Ah, I was right. She was a wonderful woman. Never deserved the horrible things said about her. I'm sorry. No reason to be, my dear, the man said, his smile fading. I know there's no possibility for you to understand the things I say or how I know them. Things from so long ago. Perhaps it's better for you to believe I'm nothing more than the lunatic I appear. But there is the child to consider. My child? She asked. The man smiled. Of course. What about her? So you do know it's a girl. The wonders of modern technology will never cease. Well, maybe they will, but I won't be around to see it. The man's eyes glazed, staring into a horizon only he could see. Something horrible is going to happen, Mary. Soon. Get out of the city. Go back to Nebraska. Forget your husband. He'll only tell you not to listen to the ramblings of a crazy old man. Like the upright, obedient wife you try so hard to be, you'll want to do as your husband commands. 
don't. Go someplace far from people. Survive and raise your daughter away from what's to come. Maybe in time she will dance like you. That's the only hope I can offer you now. The woman stood, gave the man a long look of pity, and walked away. She was around the corner before the man's eyes focused on the reality around him. For what it's worth, I love you, Mary, the old man said as he faded away, leaving behind an empty bench. He stood at the gates of St. Jean's Cemetery and allowed himself a soft chuckle, the perfect saint for a cemetery of the forgotten. The gates parted with a tired wave of his hand. He took some comfort in such a small thing. Memories of power long past tried to force themselves into his mind, but he pushed them down mercilessly. Those days were gone, and only pain followed the remembrance. The old man followed the path through the cemetery, its stones as new as the day they were laid. No one came here. No flowers on the graves. Some of the interred were lucky enough to have a name etched into stone, but only if they were found with identification. But there was so much more to a person than a mere name, the old man knew. He had possessed many in his time. A circular clearing opened out in front of him. He knew this was where it had to happen. A statue of the saint looked over the clearing, her presence meant to comfort the pitiable tenants. I apologize, ma'am, but you don't want to see this, he said. The hand at his side curled into a fist, sweat forming on his wrinkled brow. The air around him surged with eldritch energy as the statue's head melted away, rivulets of molten bronze running like blood. The old man gave a heavy sigh and wiped a sleeve across his forehead. <sighs> he sat, crossing his legs with no small effort in the center of the clearing. His hands slipped into his dirty overcoat and came out with a small mummified hand. Some of the ancient wax had chipped off but the wicks sprouting from under the tiny fingernails looked as pristine as the night it was made. He wondered how many people muddling through their modern lives would know what he held, what he could do. The thought of so many of the old arts lost to time and science would have made him cry, if only he could. This hand came from no hanged thief, however. The old man remembered where this hand came from. As his knife cut through muscle and tendon so many centuries ago, the old man, who was ancient even then, wondered what must have befallen the drowned child's mother to make her betray her own son. Not all children left to drift on the whims of a river were as fortunate as some. Please don't, he said a second before the flashlight beam hit him in the eyes. Ouch. No visitors after dark, a bored voice said from behind the flashlight. Uh, no visitors during the day either, said the old man. Would you begrudge them the only person here in years? Very funny. Now let's move it before I have to call the police. There's no need for the authorities. There's nothing they could do in any case. Now could you get that light out of my eyes, please? The beam fell from his face and landed on the severed hand. He heard the guard gasp. <gasps> what in the fuck did you do? The guard yelled. Don't, the old man said, trying to stop the guard. He caught the guard's wrist 
inches from the relic and dragged the man to his knees. He stared into the frightened eyes of him. Don't. You sick-ass, grave-robbing bastard! Rob? The old man said, his voice low and dangerous. How dare you say I'm here to rob the dead? You thought you were doing your job, but you know so little of the world around you. Let me teach you where you came from, Ryan Buchanan. How you are being given a rare opportunity here, Ryan. Something only a few select mortals have learned. The old man snuffed out the flashlight with a thought. Millennia before your kind walked this mound of dirt you banali named Earth, there were powers that knew neither form nor shape. Their energy and wonder was as infinite as the void of space. Humanity came along and bound these powers by forcing names on them, giving them visages from dreams and nightmares. Their timeless beauty molested by your mundane thoughts and imaginations. The old man released the mummified hand and it floated in the air between them. He closed his eyes, willing unseen doors to be thrown wide. The air around them thickened with a power lost to all, save one ancient enough to remember it. The old man's eyes snapped open as the hand burst into green flame. The smoke from it smelled of old graves and putrid flesh as its light promised horrors and madness. And then you went and did the cruelest thing you could have done. What? The guard asked, mesmerized. You forgot us. I'm sorry. The old man laughed. <laughs> sorry. You know what we have lost. The wonders of the infinite reduced to garish ideas, mere notions. Know what happens when no one remembers an idea? The guard shook his head. It dies. We die. I've watched my brothers and sisters my lovers and enemies fade to oblivion because the last mention of them left this existence. An antique book is destroyed in a fire. The rituals of a tribe are wiped out by your precious industry. Any number of tragedies have led to our demise. I've come to this place where in the narcissism humanity is honed to a razor's edge. You have buried your forgotten. To end this in the most poetic of ways. Gathering the fraying remains of his power, the old man focused on the burning hand in front of him. Just as the guard thought the pressure on the air was going to crush him, the old man threw back his head in a silent scream. The hand disintegrated in a blinding flash of malignant green light. The ground shifted beneath them, sending the guard onto his back. It is done, said the old man, blood pouring from the blackened pits where ancient eyes once watched the world. Something deep, something primal and elemental in the memory of Ryan Buchanan's genetic code felt the change in the world around him. Your kind will not have the honor of seeing me fade away, mortal. Let your own forgotten avenge us with the last of my will. 
bear witness to the death of a god. Witness and despair. The old man fell to the ground, his body an empty shell, as the first of many struggled to climb free of the cold earth. Ryan Buchanan, his sanity fled, could only laugh as hands of bone and rotten flesh 